I would therefore like to appeal to those who use violence, including those who use the threat of violence by calling for the destruction of Israel, to abandon these immoral and illegal methods and to use non-violent language and means of non-violence in working for justice and freedom. They can take inspiration, as I do, from the words of Abdul Ghaffar Khan, a great non-violent Muslim leader who demonstrated the power of courageous uh, Islamic non-violence through the unarmed servants of God's <laughs> army, the parallel government to liberate the Pathan people from British colonial rule in India's northwest frontier province, now Pakistan. Abdul Ghaffar Khan also taught the Holy Prophet Muhammad, praise be upon him, came into the world and taught us that a Muslim is a man who never hurts anyone by word or deed, but who works for the benefit and happiness of God's creatures. Belief in God is to love one's fellow men. From our own experience in Northern Ireland, we have learned that violence begets violence and paramilitarism, militarism, violence and war do not solve problems, but indeed are the cause of much reciprocal violence. We have learned in Northern Ireland that when a government tries to deal with terrorism by curtailment of civil liberties or by complete disregard and violation of international storm norms and standards, then this only adds to the pain, anger and fear and is the cause of much reciprocal violence. If you want justice, peace and human security, then the means must be consistent with the ends. We must use good means to achieve good ends. This lesson is important both for the Israeli government and the Palestinian authorities and all citizens of Israel and Palestine. If there is to be real progress towards peace, I only hope that you'll take inspiration from the peace process in Northern Ireland. We too in our most recent history have been in dark places where it seemed injustice and the child of violence was in danger of destroying us. In 1976 we were on the brink of civil war and the cycle of violence seemed impossible to break. Sadly a tragedy happened with the death of my sister's three young children and in a violent clash between the Irish Republican Army and the British Army, the children were all killed. Out of this tragedy there arose a massive grassroots peace movement demanding an end to violence and offering non-violence as the only way forward for the Northern Irish people. There were many other social movements and efforts by civil communities took place to resist violence and to demand justice and peace. It was a spontaneous people's movement. Ordinary people from all walks of life joining in solidarity saying, enough is enough. There is another way to solve our problems. We took inspiration from Gandhi, King and Jesus, arguing that non-violence is not weak, it is active, powerful, because it comes from the soul and therefore has the power of truth and it is simply the right thing to do. Our non-violence was risky and dangerous. We received death threats from all sides. Our property was destroyed. We were verbally and physically attacked. But we had the joy of witnessing in the first six months of the movement a 70% decrease in the rate of violence and the beginnings of peace. It was a long and dangerous path. Often we thought things were so bad, peace would never come. It took a long time for the message of non-violence to be heard, but it was finally. And it ended up in all-inclusive dialogue with the British Dublin government, who spoke to their enemies.
those in power that militarism, paramilitarism, so-called war on terrorism, do not solve these deeply complex ethnic political problems and that non-violent conflict resolution does work. I believe that here in Israel-Palestine, it will take a recognition by Israeli that Israeli security lies not in the oppression of the Palestinian people, but in dialogue and negotiation, and to recognize their rights to equality and freedom. I hope the Israeli government will follow our example in Northern Ireland and enter unconditional talks with their partners, the Palestinian Authority, in order to find solutions together. Peace is possible if we act, if we act justly, accept and celebrate the diversity we encounter, give and accept forgiveness work to heal the divisions of the past, and above all, choose the path of non-killing and non-violence. Then we will build non-killing communities and a world civilization with a compassionate heart. Building such communities starts in our own hearts, our families, and reaching out with mercy, compassion, and kindness. Another important part of building is the need for Palestinians and Israels, in spite of their fear and pain, to reach out to each other in forgiveness and to build trust. This can be done by the grassroots people-to-people -people contact, and the Israeli government can help this process by removing all restrictions which make it impossible for the Israeli-Palestinian people to meet and work together. To build a peace process, people must see improvement in their everyday lives through freedom of movement, economic development, etc. There are no quick fixes to peace. It is a hard everyday struggle to be more peaceful ourselves and I have the courage to accept diversity and difference. Yet all the while listening to each other with deep respect for their perspectives and views, no matter how different they may be from us. Trust building and friendship are the foundation stones of peaceful democratic societies and we the people of the world, no matter where we live, must do the work of laying these stones and building the bridges of peace together with and with our enemies. Here in the Middle East, the task of making friends with your enemies is necessary in order to open up the long-term possibility of everlasting peace. As in Northern Ireland, Protestants and Catholics must become their own best friends and build a shared future together. So too, Jews and Arabs must become their own best friend and build a shared future together. Here in the Holy Land, the three great world religions, there are many paths to God. United in faith and love of Abraham by working together can become an ethical and a spiritual force for good in the world. These religions can teach that the holiest thing is the life of a human being and we have no right to kill each other. And we are called to love our enemies and to love the stranger. Such a clear peace message coming out of the heart of the Holy Land would change the whole world. We humans are often fearful and anxious and sometimes we get stuck in the past, feeding our negativity and thus destroying our imagination and creativity. In order to overcome this fear, let us remember Allah loves each one of us equally. The kingdom of God lies in everyone's heart. And this connects us as a human family. We need each other's love and support in the difficult but joyous journey of life. Salam alaikum. Shalom, my friends. Je suis à